Lord forgive me for this trap shit. Sergeant Smack making backflip. Telly Hank it with the action. With the vital speaking Spanish. Frank Matthews, how I vanish. Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut. Go BBS is on a beamer. When Fat Cat was tearing queens up. Fall off the prop and not the re up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus. Uptown like I'm Baby Man. Just caught a touchdown. Free my nigga Poo Tang. So more dope than every rapper in the rap gang. Poo Tang ran up a whole M, sitting in the box. My dog rapper rolling the feds, nigga, and still move blocks. Do you know this man? His name is Jerry Chester, and he's wanted by the U.S. Marshals Counter Gang Unit on federal drug charges and weapons charges. He is our fugitive of the week. He's working and residing in the Atlanta area, and he's responsible for millions of dollars of narcotics on the streets of Atlanta. Marshals say the 28-year-old Chester ran a drug trafficking organization out of this condo in East Atlanta. They searched the unit in 2009 after getting a search warrant. They found a large amount of um, U.S. currency. They found a large amount of legal narcotics, and they also found um, equipment that's unique for specific reason of packaging narcotics in bulk. Chester is on the top rung of the drug distribution ladder, and his drugs go to the heads of many Atlanta street gangs, according to the marshals. They believe he's still hanging out in the neighborhood where he used to distribute drugs from, or around the Decatur area. And he may go by the names Rodriguez Harris, Jerry Saunders, or Montrez Saunders. And he may not look like this mugshot. The marshals say he may have gone as far as to have plastic surgery, dye his hair red, and bleached his skin. He doesn't operate alone. He operates with associates, and, and they'll warn him, and they'll protect his back, if you will, and prevent him being arrested. And if you go to Rosen's crime scene at 11alive.com slash crime, you'll see that Jerry Chester has been added to our Fugitive of the Week list. You can read more about his profile and other fugitive profiles. We'll even have a link on there to Crime Stoppers Atlanta for tips. For 11 Alive News, so during a I'm heroin Kevin investigation in Smyrna last week, gave police a fake name. A Crime Stoppers tip revealed he's really Jerry Chester, one of 11 Alive's fugitives of the week. And Cruz would Yeah, yeah. We back. It's your boy Pop a lot. Mob ties. We on our way to Georgia with it. Atlanta. Now everybody from there, y'all get in the comment box, man. Y'all let us know what part of the city y'all represent. As a matter of fact, everybody, the whole GA, y'all get in. We wanna see the state tap in with this one. Now today we are gonna be covering somebody who name ring bells beyond a neighborhood or a zone. So it's it's almost really hard to kind of place this story um, anywhere directly except for Atlanta because you know, like run through seems like the Decatur area um, I take trips through Cobb County and today we are going to be covering none other than the legend by the name of Jerry Chester or the authorities gonna say he also went by the name of Jerry Saunders or Rodriguez Harris or Montrez Saunders or Tang or what most of the city or even the world some people name ring bells just past the city or state we're gonna be talking about none other none other than Poo Tang now you guys might have heard the name I'm sure some of you guys um, just the everyday viewers we get it's gonna be an episode that we did a little bit back on a guy by the name of papa joe where we heard gucci Mane shout out poo tang before he did give a shout out to papa joe we also hear scooter talk about him and numerous songs columbia remix which was i want to say one of scooter's first big songs um he was spoken on future and the name, it, it goes on and on. Could have probably played for a little bit. If y'all know something that I ain't mentioned, y'all get in the comment box and let it be known. But by all accounts, Poo Tang was going to be a big deal in the city. Even after his incarceration, um, his name is still relevant. And he's been 
arrested more than a decade. So that just kind of tells you and shows you like the effect that he had on the streets. Now, I did a little bit of research on the, the charges that the government brought against him and try to break it down. I'm going to put it in perspective as best as I can for y'all. Um, now, a court, the authorities are going to charge him um, with drug distribution, pretty much. And, they, and that's going to happen from a search warrant that occurred on June 3rd in 2009. Now, they're going to claim, or allegedly, they're going to say that Pu Tang was running a drug trafficking organization out of a condominium on Memorial Drive in East Atlanta. And they're going to say at that search warrant, they found large amounts of U.S. currency. They also found a lot of illegal narcotics. And they're going to say that they found equipment that was used for packaging narcotics in bulk so uh definitely probably you know scales compressors or whatever um now they went on to say that he was on the top rung of the drug distribution ladder and that his drugs would head out to many atlanta street gangs and when that search warrant was served he he pretty much was wanted so the search warrant happened on june the 3rd 2009 and i guess that's the beginning of the case because it looks like he wasn't actually wanted until august of 2011. that's where it kind of gets murky with that time but even then um when when he was wanted they didn't find they didn't have no way to find him and they pretty much said that they believed that he was still hanging out in a neighborhood where he used to distribute drugs in the Decatur area and they said that he didn't operate alone he had pretty much associates that will warn him and keep him up to date as far as what was going on and they said he they considered him armed and dangerous and said that he had vast amounts of financial resources and people are afraid to inform police about his whereabouts. Now, that's going to be kind of important because fast forward a year later and there the third uh, state, the state or uh, the or Cobb County, they're going to have a man by the last name of Robinson in custody that they will find out and fingerprints or by fingerprint identification that would turn out to be Jerry Chester. And um, based on my research, so he was being held on that charge on a Nobel warrant, but it seems like they got a Crime Stopper tip. <laughs> Always somebody. Seems like they got a Crime Stopper tip letting them know, hey, uh, Jerry Chester, you already have him arrested in Cobb County. Um, and they were pretty much saying that they were trying to bail him out. But like I said, it was a no bail warrant. So eventually he was going to be identified. And when he was arrested, so they they were looking for him, but he was in jail already under a false name just to try to put it in perspective for y'all. But when he was arrested, he was arrested in a separate investigation. And that's just, that's just how big this shit is. Talk about movie. Um, They're going to say that he was arrested during a drug investigation of 10 kilos of heroin in Smyrna, Georgia. And they're going to say during that time, he fled on foot and was apprehended. And they charged him separately besides... Um, what they were looking for him prior with obstruction, possession of a firearm, and possession of methamphetamine. That's in. So, like, all of that was according to authorities. And, like I said, uh, they did get a Crime Stoppers tip, but the, um, the charges, according to the deputy U.S. Marshal by the name of Eric Hansey, um, the charges 
or the Crime Stopper tip only got the ball rolling. That way they can place a federal hold on him from that state charge and then begin to process him. So I wasn't able to really find out exactly how much time they gave him. Um, but I noticed that it was a non, there was no violence. I didn't see where none of that was associated with it. So it's like some of, he should be looking to be being released coming up soon. He already um, almost had a decade served in. So we're going to see how this turn out. You know how we do it over here at Mob Ties. It's free Pooty Tang, free the gang. Um, anybody that got an outlet to him, let him know. We out here waiting for him to touch back down. And y'all know what it is, man. We're going to cover every real solid one and every solid hood. Uh, it's your boy, Pop a lot. Y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. I'm going to be back with some more real trill spill shit. And y'all know what to do, man. Y'all hit the bell under this video if y'all want some more. And smile. Mob. 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 Ties.